Arka. Kona means corner and Arka means sun god. Sun god is also known by the following names. Arka, Bhanu, Udaya, Surya, Aditya, Bhaskara, Hiramba, Saptasapti, Mitra are all names of sun god. Konak temple is located in the village of Konaka, adjacent to the Bay of Bengal, at a distance of about 35 km north of the entire city. Konak is also known as Kenapara, and based on all the evidence, this place has proved to be very important in history. It has been a busy and successful trading port from ancient times. Konak Sun Temple was constructed in the 12th century by King Narsimha Dev I of Ganga Empire. It is believed that Narsimha Dev I was the best king of that kingdom and constructed the Konak Temple after winning a very important battle with Muslim invaders. The foundation stone of this temple was laid by King Narsimha Dev in 1243 AD. From all over the country, 1200 experts were chosen who worked hard for 12 years and completed the temple in 1255 AD. Modern science claims that this temple was built in the 13th century, but the Vedas give lot of evidence that this ancient temple is much older. Some reliable sources say that this temple is made by Lord Krishna's son Sam. A Chinese Buddhist traveller, Yung Zhang, also referred to as Zhang Zhang, who came for a tour of India in the 7th century, has praised this region and Sun Temple a lot in his book. He described Konak city as being grand and full of modern resources of that time. He has also mentioned a lot about the Sun Temple's monument and temple arena in his book. Based on his book, the city of Konak was very prosperous in the 7th century itself. It is believed that the Sun Temple was originally built on the seashore, but as time passed, due to some natural reasons, the sea receded and the temple is now a few kilometers away from the seashore. Friends, this is my third video and from recent times I have been researching a lot about temples and ancient monuments. I am almost seeing a pattern where there is a lot of wrong information on the internet about important Hindu monuments, be it Kedarnath Ji, Konaka or Ram Setu that they have either been built only in the early 10th century or recently, whereas the existence of Hinduism traces back to more than 12,000 years ago. There is a beautiful carving of the sun god made in red sandstone at Konak temple. The temple is built as a giant chariot of sun god drawn from seven horses with 12 wheels. In the current scenario, only one horse from seven is left. The Konak temple's famous wheel can be seen in many places. There are three idols of sun god in this temple. First is the rising sun which is 8 feet, second is the afternoon sun which is 9 feet and the third one is available at sunset which is situated near the entry gate and is about 3.5 feet long and carved as an attacking lion. All these statues are made from one single stone and they weigh almost 28 tons. Beautiful carvings can be seen in the walls of the temple which describe different situations of life. The temple is shown as a symbol of the sun god time period. The 24 wheels of the temple represent 24 hours of the day, 12 diameter which is pulled by horses represent 12 months of the year, 8 spokes represent the day cycle and 7 horses represent the 7 days of the week. The detailed characterization of the temple in this way shows how to calculate time by sun god. The Gopura of the Sun Temple in Konak, upper dome being black in color, many experts also call it as Black Pagoda. The black color of the Gopura helped passengers of that period in navigation. Friends, if you are thinking Konaka Temple is just a temple, then you are wrong. You will be surprised to know that this temple has been created on a scientific basis and everything in this temple has been made with scientific reasons. Let me explain. Every pillar of the temple wall is surrounded by iron plates, where each iron plate separates one pillar from the other. The magnets have been placed with variable flux and magnetic intensity on the major nodes of the temple. A large magnet is installed in the center base of the temple. When the statue of sun god was installed in the center in these circumstances, then the idol zero used to float in the air due to the magnetic effect. Every day, the rays of the sun would reach the temple from the shore and create a reflection in the diamond placed in the center of the statue. For a few decades, with the passage of time, the floating of the idols became a mystery between people. And then came the British rule, where instead of understanding this mystery, they said it's black magic and caused problems for them. The British removed the magnet and all magnificent statues from the temple and transported them to Britain, where even today it is all showcased in the British Museum. 
The British also confused the locals by saying a lot of fake stories about the temple to take the magnet with them to Britain. Stories such as due to this magnet we are facing issues to navigate in the sea, the navy compass is getting disturbed etc. But as mentioned earlier, the real fact is that these things were made to help sailors in navigation. Now let's dig deeper and know a little more about the science behind the wheel of the temple. As you know the sun dial has 8 major spokes that divide 24 hours into 8 equal parts which means every two spokes have a time duration of 3 hours between them. And in the middle of every two spokes one minor spoke is also carved whose total number is 8. The time between the spokes is 3 hours and according to this I divide the minor spoke between the spokes based on this 3 hours have been shown in two parts which means the minor spoke represents 1.5 hours or 90 minutes. If you look closely at the side of the wheel, a lot of beads are carved. If we count those, it is found that 30 beads are made in the middle of each minor spoke. Since minor spoke represents 90 minutes, 90 minutes should also be divided by 30 and based on this calculation, every bead carries a value of 3 minutes. The beads are large enough. We can see the shadow falling on the center and sides of the bead very comfortably and by this, we can get accurate information of hours and even minutes. Just try imagining once, when this temple was built 5000 years ago, how did the astrologers, engineers and workers coordinate with each other and how professionally they have built this temple. I was just wondering, when the sun moves to the west and since all these wheels are carved in the east wall, the sun wouldn't shine on this wall at all and at that time how did people get information on the time? And I have found that there is one more wheel and sundial which is located at the west side of the temple and this wheel is used to know the timing between afternoon and evening. Isn't this just amazing? The second most interesting thing is, it's fine till sunset but what about getting information on night time? And guess what, it's a shocking fact that like sundial even the moon dial works. Konark Sun Temple has 24 wheels in total and all these wheels were carefully carved and out of all the wheels, only two wheels work as sundial. It is believed that at that time, some of these wheels were also made according to the moon dial so that even in night time, it gives accurate information. Many people also believe that all these remaining 22 wheels were made for decoration or religious purposes only and they are of no use. Let me remind you one more thing, that a few years back, some people had also refused to bury the sundial until they were proven wrong. There was a time when people thought all these 24 wheels were just carved for decoration and beauty. Around a hundred years ago, a holy man was found calculating time in this temple secretly. Then some locals requested him and he revealed the secret behind this mystery. Then the world got to know about this beautiful and shocking method of calculating time in the ancient world. Many yogis, sages and sannyasis have been using this method very secretly from ages and we as normal people just didn't know about these gems from all these years. It has been said that when the holy man was asked about the other 22 wheels, he didn't say a word and left from there and has not been seen ever since. Even now the information we have about the two sandals is almost nil. If we believe this, then it will not be wrong. For example, many beads can be seen in each wheel such as the major spoke has 60 beads. What is the reason behind that? What is the reason for the many more designs and patterns created on the sundial? Flowers and leaves are made on the sundial which happens in spring. There are carvings of monkey mating which happens in winter. At the entry of the temple, there are statues of two big lions, elephants and humans, statues of deities, dancers, scenes of life, at court, etc. About which even today, we do not have much or any information. Isn't it possible that these sundials have been used as a calendar and many other important and different things? What if I say that the whole temple as an institution has been used for many other important aspects of life such as research and development, astrology, science and it was much more than what we can think of. The biggest example of people's ignorance is that they have always been connecting these carvings with beauty, decoration and religious purpose and not paying attention to this ancient knowledge from many years. If ancient people have spent a lot of time creating something, there is a very good chance that it was done for a valuable scientific purpose. According to many experts and valid sources, Konark Sun Temple has been directly attacked by Mughals many times in the past thousand years and it finally got destroyed and deserted in 1568 by a Muslim invader called Kala Pahar. 
After this incident, the British attacked this temple, and not only did they lie to locals and spread rumors about the temple, but they also stole many important statues and took them to England. Even today, many of the statues can be seen in the museums in England. Not only this, in 1903, the British claimed that the temple's magnet is causing issues in navigation, and so they filled the interiors of the temple with sand and closed it. Today, it's more than 100 years, but the temple is still closed. Wouldn't it be really nice if this temple gets restored to its original state, like in 